Ada mahadhar yang kita boleh kita We do have a lecture. We'll continue with where we left last time. So the last time we were talking about uh, dipping layers. But before that, let me make some quick corrections. Whenever there are actually more than one layer and they are horizontal, how you get the time or intercept time to respective layers? So it's actually done using this technique. So intercept time of second or third layer, that's the third layer. Let me do use the drawing so I explain while I'm talking. Uh, this is this is the intercept from third layer or between second and third layer. The rays are traveling in the second layer, but the refractions are happening critically refracted from second layer. So this is first layer, second layer, T and two is this one. Whereas this is T and intercept one, which is this one. This is this one. We already know how to get the intercept, intercept uh, time from the first layer. Simply this equation. So for the second layer, this is what you use. That's the equation, what you use. So let me ask you what what is the equation to get the insert the intercept time from the third layer from the third which is this layer third or this value intercept three it's simply these two there is a plus this value plus this value why it's noisy these two values plus a third term which is 2 H 3 this is H 1 H 2 and H 3 square root of 1 V 3 squared of this V minus 1 of V 4 squared. So this is V 4. That's the case for intercept time 3 and so on. So if you are about to get intercept, intercept time for fourth layer, you add one extra term. And that's what you're going to be doing for today's lab. We talked about uh, inter or dipping layers. Whenever there is a dipping layer, the scenario is a bit different. The velocities you are getting, they are called apparent velocities rather than true velocities because to investigate or to get to know that there are two or are dipping layers, you need to run two different refractions, two different refractions opposite to each other, at least two. Usually we acquire more than two in one single case. And in the last week or the week before I had a field trip with geology, a field geophysics course, a field trip. Uh, since there are few number of students, I'm asking them to come to the ski -U. So we did how many shots? We acquired five shots, five. So in this case, I'm acquiring only two shots. I don't change the location of the geophones. I plan the geophones. In our equipment, we have 24 geophones. So what I do, I plan them. This is my surface, surface of the earth. This is geophone one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. And that's 24. 
2.24 because the equipment we have in our department it can be connected to 24 jufuns. So first I make a, a hammering here, source here, a source one. And another source here, the same offset. If this is five meter, this is also five meter from the last jufun. This is last jufun and here I make another source. The source is just simply a hammer, a hammer head to the ground. That's the simplest source for seismic refraction technique. So to, to know that the layers are dipping, that's the basic or simplest configuration you have to make. But usually we make a source in here in the middle. And also a source here between Jufun 6 and 7. That's the middle. That's the middle of this range. From here to here, from first to 12, first to 12, that's the first half of 24. The middle is six and seven. So what's the middle of 13 and 24? If I want to acquire five shots, one, two, three, four. The middle of 13 and 24 is 18 and 19. Jufun, where I try to find where Jufun 18 is and where Jufun 19 is, 19 is in between them, I make a hammer shot. I never change the location of the Jufuns. Jufuns will stay in the same location. The concept here, the minimum configuration, the minimum number of shots you need to tell that the layer are dipping one layer or more than one layer are dipping you need to make at least two shots opposite shots one of them called forward the other one is called reverse shot what they tell you each one gives you a line a refraction line if their slope is the same are they dipping or not then or the, is the layer dipping or not? If the velocity is the same, refraction velocity from reverse and forward uh, refraction. Who can answer me? I'm expecting an answer from someone. Mm, no, yes, they are not, it's flat then. As Ryan said, if the layer is flat, the forward and reverse give you the same velocity. So this value here, what you see, V2, second layer, forward, and V2 of reverse, they are the same. Because the layer, this is not dipping, this is then straight. If it's dipping, the slope for forward is different than the slope for the reverse. In that case, there is a dipping. There is a dipping. And how I get the true velocity of the layer? The simplest technique is just average them, average the both values as we do here. That's how you get uh, the average velocity or the estimate velocity of the second layer. You do averaging. And the depth, you get two depths. Each intercept, this intercept gives you a different depth or thickness of first layer. This one gives you another dip. Working out these two depths or getting these depth, two depths, you can tell then what is the dipping of the layer. You can tell what is the, how the layer is dipping, which direction is the up dip and which direction is down dip. However, Yani, if I do, if I get this book, maybe the dipping is in this direction, whereas my my line is here. It's not along the dip direction. The dipping is in here, but my pen is in this direction. So this is higher dip than this one. That's true. But the true dip, true dip is in along this direction, not along this direction. So how to get the true dip? This is apparent dip still. 
how to get the true dip. So if I make, I get this one. So let's suppose this is dipping in this direction, whereas my line is in this direction. Jufun are planted like that along this line. So this is not the dip direction. Should This is the dip, rare dip direction. But I cannot tell. This is below the earth. This layer is below the earth. I cannot tell which is the true dip direction. How to tell the true dip direction? Oh, I can't tell what is the true dip direction. Let me ask uh, someone. Uh, Arim. Look. No. I need to change. I do. I need to do something extra in the uh, survey during the survey during the acquisition time. I need to do some extra big change. So if this is the deep direction, I'm not sure because I'm on the surface. I'm not seeing this layer. Whereas my line profile or Jufun are lied down in along this direction. So I'm telling not the true dip. The true dip is usually the highest dip. The maximum dip is the true dip. This is lower than the true dip. I need to acquire two perpendicular lines. I need to do what? Two perpendicular lines. That's how you do it. You need to acquire two perpendicular lines opposite each other. So uh, you can then you see that uh, it's getting more complex. I'm exerting more effort instead of just uh, doing one profile. I need right now two profiles. Yes, if you want to get the true dip, you need to have two perpendicular profiles to make a 3D sense of the earth instead of one line. Because one, one line is an image of, it's a 2D image of the earth. One line is a 2D. If you want to make a 3D image, you need to have two perpendicular lines, at least minimum requirements. So to get the true dip, you have to acquire two different profiles perpendicular to each other. Each profile gives you a slope, a dip. Each profile gives you a dip. This is another dip. To get the true dip, use this equation. So this is the true dip. I obtained the true dip. That's the direction. I want to know its orientation from north. Let's assume that this is north, calculating from north up to this direction or the dip direction. North up to deep direction. That's the theta. That's the azimuth. So this is the theta. How I get the theta? Using this equation. So you have to obtain the angle and use this one sign of this uh, profile of uh, one of the dip, dip divided by the true dip sign of the true dip to get the uh, dip angle or dip direction dip azimuth or dip trend that's what we name it another interesting things for dipping layers so the velocities are not the real velocity. One of them, both of them, they are called apparent uh, velocities. But one of them is higher than the other. The reverse or the, um, the forward, they give you different velocities. And one of them is higher. And the other is lower. Which one is higher? Whenever you are going up dip, you are going up dip. Keep this in mind. Up dip gives you a higher velocity. The slope is lower. So in this TX diagram, whenever the slope is gentler, the velocity is higher. If the dip or the slope is steeper slope, 
the velocity is lower because the slope and velocity they are reciprocal of each other if the slope is high it means the velocity is low the slope is gentle it means the velocity is high that's very simple because they these two are reciprocal of each other another thing the dip you get or the h you get is not is not this uh, horizontal or vertical depth or thickness. It's the stratigraphic thickness. This is what we call stratigraphic thickness. And this is the true vertical depth or true vertical thickness. True vertical thickness, whereas this is stratigraphic thickness. So refraction gives you this thickness, not the true vertical thickness. You need to know the dip amount to calculate. If you know the dip amount, you can calculate true vertical depth or true vertical thickness. So let's talk about some problems uh, with seismic refraction. <clears throat> You mean the line when it goes down, the velocity will be less? Yes. That's what I mean. For the down dip, this is down dip direction. You're going from this direction. This shot will give you a lower velocity for the refracted layer. The refracted layer, second layer, will have a lower velocity than the true velocity if you are uh, doing your calculation using the forward shot, this shot. Whereas it's the opposite, you get an overestimated, a higher velocity than the real velocity if you are uh, calculating or making your calculation using the reverse shot. You are going up the direction. To get an estimate, just average them. But let's talk about some caveats, some problems, some deficiencies with the refraction technique. Diffra any geophysical technique, it has some deficiencies as we talked about in, um, in our first introduction slides. So first of all, if I go to the equation, back to the equation, when, when do you think this will not work? When you think this will not work, mathematician, who is good in mathematics? Who can tell me? Anwar. Anwar al-Maqbali. What do you think? When this will not work? Based on the equation. V1 doctor, Yes. That's true. Who was answering me? Who was Amen. answering me? Yeah, Amen. that's true. So yeah. So if V if V1 higher than V2, this what happens to this one? I don't want this to be minus. When this is gonna be minus, whenever this is higher value because one divided by a high number it gives you a low number if this is higher than this one you get a minus this is a complex number we are not in a complex domain so refraction will not work if the velocity of the second layer deeper layers are higher sorry lower velocity than the upper layers this is one of the drawbacks. The refraction in this case will not work. So that's one of the caveats. And what we call this thing in geophysics, uh, velocity inversion. The velocity inversion in refraction, velocity inversion in refraction means deeper layers have lower velocity than the upper layers. And this is quite possible. You know, in geology.
and we cannot detect sometimes low velocity layers so that's that's one of the cases we cannot detect thin layers very very if there is a very thin layer it's not possible to detect it as we said yani to get the true depth we need multiple survey one in this direction one in the perpendicular direction to get the true depth so it's not just one dip so one survey one line you need to acquire more than one data those are all drawbacks we need then to determine the true dip because the ears is 3d it's dipping in certain direction my profile is not aligned along the dip direction so i need to have two different profiles two different survey lines for the refraction and this is all consuming much more time there's supposed to be people who plan the geophones who make the hammering who record this is all waste of time then or time cons consumed doing the survey so we'll discuss some of these uh, cases uh, we'll talk about the hidden layers and low velocity layers thin layers there is a we call it hidden layer when whenever the la layer is very thin or low velocity layer which we call inversion when the lower layer have the deeper layers have a, a lower velocity than upper layers refraction will not work so keep this in mind refraction technique there is no refraction whenever the lower or deeper layers have lower velocity than the higher layers how we confirm that according just following the travel times of the refracted energy the, in the equation minus under the square root is a complex number will not go to complex domain doctor uh, i think also when uh, one layer one velocity equal to zero because uh, we cannot divide by zero uh, velocity zero uh, actually, anything must have a velocity. Yani the simplest thing, which is uh, which is the air, it has a velocity. So velocity can't be zero, but can be lower than the upper one. I'm talking uh, not mathematically. That's true. It cannot be zero. It's undefined. The value is undefined. Yani I cannot divide by zero. Mathematically, that's true, but always always try that's a good thing because you are trying to correlate things to geology geophysics is different than geology geophysics are all numbers but you try to get two things together physics and geology what is possible physically might not be possible geologically they might not make reasonable geological interpretation sometimes and sometimes you get like a velocity high velocity 20 kilometer per uh, second 20 kilometer per second there is no rock which have 20 kilometer per second so you need to make such consideration whenever you are doing geophysical investigation or oh, don't accept things you um, they might be wrong don't accept anything make some judgment yourself before you take your or do your interpretation Take nothing granted in geophysics, yani. Oh, make some analysis. If the th if your velocity is 30 or 50 kilometer per second, wow, <laughs> that's yani so fast. It's, there is no rock where the seismic velocities are that much high. So we'll discuss first low velocity layer, and we stop here. We move to the lab then. So what happens if the of one of the layers v2 is lower velocity than v1 uh, according to snell's law because snell's law is the governing equation what happens if v1 this is v2 and the ray is hitting the interface at an angle what do you think happens the ray does it move or refract in this direction or the other direction one or two if v2 is lower than v1 two 
<clears throat> That's true. So it's moving to, it's not allowing time for critical refraction. There, it's not going to the critical refraction, especially if the third layer is higher velocity than the second layer. There is no then critical refractions. I need critical, critically refracted. I need the the ray to be moving parallel to this layer, or sorry, to this layer. It's not moving parallel to this layer. So I'm not getting critical refractions from second layer. I'm getting from third layer, which are this one, which is this refracted ray from here. But I'm not getting any refracted energy from here. This is the direct. This is this one. Oh, not this one. It's in the ground. This is air wave. What's in the top is air wave. This is the direct. Vector Y is reflected in the second layer, not here. I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Why the ray is reflected in the second layer? uh reflected it's reflected toward the normal this is based on snell's law snell's law governs the how the wave refract and reflects so snell's law says according to snell's law whenever the second layer is high having a lower velocity than the first layer the ray will refract toward the normal so if there is any other layer third layer of higher velocity I will not get to the critical refracted angle. Unless if this is quite very, very thick. And if this is quite very, very thick, then I might get it. Or unless I don't want to go to this, uh, to these exceptions because they complicate you. There are some exceptions. In geophysics, there is some inspection. But those exceptions or uh, change there are unique things so we ignore them yeah one of those is that if you have your geophone quite far 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 away from where the source is and if i my source is in uh, Mabela, in here sorry in mosquito and my array my geophones are in Mabela, and my layer is very thick the layer is very, very, very thick, high thick, which is not reasonable sometimes. Any. So that's the reason I said there are some exceptions. But in general, um, that's how the case is. Whenever the lower velocity, the layer, lower layer has higher, uh, lower velocity than the upper layer, we assume or um, get this impression that there is no critical refractions there is no refracted energy from that layer low velocity layer so let me see how much left so this is geologically possible when in cases whenever there is a, a sandstone below igneous rocks or sandstone below clay rocks or salt layer, a layer which is a salt above some sedimentary layers. In that case, is we get what we call velocity inversions. So how we can tell, how what we do, we usually bring these things to the geologist, or we have at least one wheel, or we have some outgroups in the nearby area. Or we integrate other techniques, not just a seismic refraction. We do, for example, uh, resistivity technique or um, graffiti technique. Other techniques, they each one gives you a different model. So some refraction might not work in this case, but other geophysical techniques, they will work. Why we will get low velocity when uh, the sedimentary rock below igneous rock? Yeah. And because igneous rocks usually are, are denser, so velocities of igneous rocks are higher. Velocity of seismic wave in igneous rocks is way higher than its velocity in sedimentary rocks. Salt has high velocity. 
So the velocity of seismic waves in salt is close to 4,000, whereas its velocity in sedimentary rocks is about 2,500, 2,500 or 3,000 or 3,500 within that range. So there are many factors which control the velocity of waves or seismic waves in rocks. Rock edge, rock density, uh, saturation, porosity, temperature, all of these things, they um, affect the rock uh, velocity or seismic waves in, uh, in rocks. In general, um, from many investigations, we know that sedimentary rocks have lower velocity than igneous rocks. So maybe there is a sedimentary rock below. On top of that is an igneous rock. It happens because igneous can like, uh, as there is a cell or there is a magma, so these things are possible in geology. Uh, and then we call that this is a uh, velocity inversion. We have a case of velocity inversion. So I will stop here because there are other cases of hidden layers. And I think, let me see, I will continue these things, discard fuel, few slides left. So let me move to the lab. So I have sent you the lab. Am I on? Take out, log in. So what I sent you, I sent you the lab itself. Questions, this is the one. Here you submit your lab. So I sent you a file called refraction shot gather. If I open it, you'll find it looks like something similar to what you have here. What is this one? This is exactly what you see here, but I made some uh, some grouping along or on the boundary of this gather. It's a shot gather. So you see refraction. Wait a bit, yes. So here we'll have next week another lab. So you submit it in week six. Uh, for this one, you submit here. Refraction lab, you submit it here. Earthquake seismology lab submission was here. Is that clear? You submit this submission is due on. 16th of March, sweet time, 16th of March. So it's not next week, the week after. It's 9th of March, next week on Tuesday. Is that clear? Yes. How much, how many days left? nine days and nine hours. So for this one, you submit it here. So let me go along what you have. You have such a gather. This is called a shot gather. We have two axes or axes. One is the distance. The other one is I need some involvement from your side. What is the y-axis? The y-axis. It is time because it's time. Yes, simply time. This is the x-axis. And the units, uh, this one is in meter. And this is uh, in time, in second. Uh, let me ask some question before we proceed i think this is the first arrival am i right or wrong uh, where do you see my mouse yes so is this the first arrival or not you can no. tell no it's not that's true 
I think this is the first arrival. Yes. Am I right or no? That's true. That's true. This is exactly true. I think this is the first arrival. Who can tell? Am I right or wrong? Yes, that's true. Yes, that's true. Yes, this is true. This is the first arrival. I might ask, what are these? What the things you see? Here, where? Here, here. You see my mouse? Yes, here, where? No, no, they're not here. Who can tell what are these things? Airwave, by the way, is not a right. Yeah, these are noise. The glass is saying these things are noises. What you see here is a noise. Why I don't see them here? Why are there here? I will refer this to this question later on. But before that, what is this line? What is this line, which is straight? It's a geophone. It's a geophone. It's a geophone. So it's a trace. So if I ask you a question, how many geophones are there? You simply go count the number of lines. If I ask you, what is the total number of traces or geophones? Geophone is not accurate because usually they can put more than two geophones to detect one trace, to give you one trace. It's possible. So the number of vertical lines, as Al Abdulaziz is saying, is the number of traces. You can count them. And the question, what is the spacing between one geophone to another geophone? Between one geophone? Yeah, this is the next one meter. Let's do some counting. So let's see. This is first geophone. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20, geophone 20 at 20 meter. So what's the distance? One meter between meter. Nine. One meter. Yeah, it's one meter. Simply one meter. See, so you phone 20 as 20 meter. And there are straight vertical line. My question, which geophone right now receives the energy first? Which geophone you think is the geophone which is receiving the, the energy first? So if I start counting them, I assume that this is one and this is uh the last one which is 96 by the way yani. the last geophone is 96. which geophone is the first to receive the energy where energy comes first who can tell first geophone second third and so on which one one yes one why because this is I'm seeing some shaking here, exactly here, where the those are receiving the shaking later. This is some noise in here. Why there is noise? I go the question I ask why there is noise. I don't see the noise here because if if I'm talking to somebody nearby me. Oh, before that question, <laughs> where the source you think is? Where the source? Is it in the middle here? Where is my hammer? along this line. I do a hammer, I hit a hammer. That's the Jufun lines, Jufuns. I hit a hammer. Where do you think is it? At what Jufun is it? At zero, before one. At zero. Zero, zero, that's true. Beam is saying zero on the left. Exactly, well, this is where the Jufun one is. No, sorry, the source location. Source is at zero, zero. Time is zero, time is zero, and distance is zero. 
or distance is zero and time is zero too. So there is my source. And that's the reason you see noises there. Whereas in this area, there is not much noises. Why? Because the energy is traveling farther away. So the energy is lost. Somehow the energy is lost because it's expanding in big area. And the energy density is smaller. And it's went to big area. If I keep uh, all the energy in small area, the energy density is high. If I expand it in big area, the energy density is small. So the noise is going to start contaminating your signals, your traces. You start receiving some noises. So usually far traces, far traces from the source or near, these are near offset. These are far offset. Offset is the distance from Jufun to the trace, uh, Jufun to source. This is, we call it uh, offset. Far offset, near offset. Far offset, usually they are noisier. So that's the reason you see some noises. So your task here, first of all, your task, there is a question saying, traces with reverse polarity. What is a reverse polarity? A reverse polarity is simply in, in, in Jufun or in Geophysics, let me do some, draw some things. So if, if, if the trace is moving like that, the first thing is up, this is positive polarity or positive. If it's moving down, the first is negative polarity. negative polarity so if it's moving like that it's positive polarity if it's moving like probably like that oh let me delete these things again do it so this is probably positive polarity and the opposite of this which is this one negative polarity so can you identify a change in polarity and where these traces are show me only two and they are actually just two so if i look closely oh these are all the first break the first energy is to the right ah, if you go to 50 you see one trace is in the opposite direction and also one in here at about 80. At about 50, there is a trace of opposite direction. Why this happens, uh, you don't need to know exactly, but it happens because Jufun, this is a Jufun, it has two wires, two connection wires. They go to the cable, you connect them to the cable. There is a cable, there are two connections, you connect them to the cable, to record and it happens sometimes the students swap them and whenever they do connection they swap instead of putting this to the right this is to the left they swap it so the voltage is swapped and that's why it's called opposite polarity oh this is an opposite polarity all of these, for example, if I go take this one, take this one, you see it's moving this direction, about this direction. But whereas this one, it's moving to the other, the other direction. The nearby, this one exactly, if you try to trace it. Here, I'm not sure what this one is. You start 40, 41, 2, 3, and so on. Try to find what exactly is this one. It might be 50 because it's in the middle between 40 and 60. It might be 51 or 48. 
within those numbers but this is one and this is the other one it's exactly this one where the mouse is so there is a polarity reversal دكتوري انا قصدك في الخط الواحد يكون فيه من رقمه من رفاع ولا كيف في الخط الواحد تشوف انه تجالس كان جلسه حلوه عصافير وما اعرف ايش اصوات حلوه فاذا تشوف مثلا ان الخط جاي كذا هذا انرجي ذيس از فير انرجي اوف فيرست بريك وات انرجي از ذيس اي كانوت تيل يو از ات دايركت از ات ريفلكشن or uh, refraction which layer refraction he does the next task but this is uh, strong energy from first break the energy is arriving to me the traces the traces started receiving the energy before this time here this is all noise energy start received here i'm seeing some line but why this trace does not give me a a peak a, 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 a dark color why it does not give me a change to the to the right how they plot them they plot them this this is a convention yani if if the trace moves this direction this is the zero they color this one positive they color it inside they make shading whereas this one they does not make shading this is just a convention in geophysics they sometimes just plot it like that this plotting we call it wiggle in geophysics wiggle w i double g l e this we call it variable area variable variable change area So there is variable density also. Like variable density size mic. Here are. So I have uh, this is the first one, which is uh, this is the wiggle, this is variable area, and this is variable density. This is variable density, the last one. This is also you see here is variable density. Variable density can be gray or can be a different color. But what you see right now in here, it's variable area. This plot type of plot is variable area. So my question was, where you see the change in polarity? What I talked about, those these are called seismic display, type of seismic displays students will study this in uh, geophysical or apply uh, applied method, method one seismic methods maybe next semester they take it the one who are taking right now general geophysics geophysicist the next question how many lines are there how many layers sorry not lines layers are there how many layers are there? It based on how many layer line you can fit along these first breaks. How many lines can you fit? That's the question right now. How many lines can you fit? Just a quick visual inspection on this shot, on the first breaks. How many straight lines you can fit? Five. That's two. Too much. Some someone two. saying two. Yes. Who is saying two? Who is saying to? Mohammed? Said, why are you are so angry? <laughs> no, <Said>. no. <laughs> yes. Okay, no problem. Some saying two, some saying three, some saying five. So let me try to do it. How I, how I do it? I get this one. I go to search, close. I search something called snipping tool. Uh, sorry, search. Snipping tool. Snipping tool. Get the snipping tool. Get it here. And new. Draw 
just get the inside, not the numbers. Only this one. Without the numbers. Inside and save it. Save as. Let me save it in your course. General Geophysics Lab Lab Five Capture. I named it Capture. Oh, let's make it Section. Seismic Section or Gather. It's not a section. It's a Gather. Save it. I saved it. I go to this folder. General Geophysics uh, Labs. Uh, week five that's the one i open it with right click you'll find the first thing edit with photos it comes by default with windows if you have windows you'll find it i just right click and i select edit with photos so that's what i get i need to make something i need to bring this origin here zero zero i make it here time zero distance zero is here in this corner this figure has four corners, one, two, and so on. So I make rotate. Zero, zero right now is in here. I rotate again. Zero, zero is here. I cannot rotate it anymore. I need to flip it. Flip it. So zero, zero is here right now. So this is quite similar to what you have seen in your slides. So this photo is similar to what you have seen here in your slides. You see how many lines I can draw? Those are the lines, red lines. So this is something similar to what you have seen here. I made it this way. So it's simplified for you. So uh, once you made these re rotations and flipping, just save it. Let's save it. Save copy. Here is the button. Click save copy. And let me save it in the same directory. Where is it? Uh, labs week. And let's replace or just name it too. And Let's close these things, close. Let's go back to our course in Moodle, General Geophysics. I sent you this website. Victoria on the line, yes, how many lines you can fit to the first breaks. So number of layers depends on the number of layers you can fit along those first breaks is that clear so we'll guess right now some said five some said two some said one some said three some said nothing some said this is just garbage this is not a real thing let's see <laughs> So here is my geometry. This is the, I, I made a link. The first thing you need to do is bring a, fit, a picture. Click on this plus. You don't need to install any software or anything. It's online. You just need an internet connection. And you'll find an option saying image. Click on it and choose a file. Don't choose webcam because webcam, you need to have a camera. Choose file and choose a file from some directory in your computer. I'm going to General Geophysics Lab, week five. And that's the one. I have two. But this is the sec second one. I choose this one. OK. So I got, I got two points, A and B. A is along this point. B is along this point, this corner. The first corner is A. The second corner is B. So the first corner, A, at what coordinate is supposed to be? 
what is the t time and distance at a zero 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 so go here change them to zero 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 There was a repetition. So B, B at what distance is it? What's the location of last G phone? If there are 26 G phones. B at what location is it? What is the what is the X of B? And what's the y of b? What, what's what, what is the time at b in this coordinate? Zero. Okay. Yeah, y is zero. And y x is 69. 96. 90? 96 as the number of 90, uh, 97. One extra, one line, last line. It's not a line, it's a frame. And it, it, 97. Always you change something, go to this move button. Always go to move because you don't want to change. So this is how is it? Why it's 97? Because this G phone is at 96. So this suppose this is not a G phone, six an extra space. This is 97. The source is here at zero zero. This is the first G phone, second and so on. And this is the time axis. Go click here. Always click here. Whenever you do something, because if you are not in move, it will create many things. <laughs> right now, this is very important. I need to create three points to to control a square. You need three points, not two points. Controlling a line, you need two points. But controlling a space, oh, sorry, a square, you need three points. So let's create a new point. How to create a point? Go here. So this is the line. This is, those are some tools. If you go click on this one, you'll find a point. I need this point here. What is the value here in this corner? Let's go back to the lab. What is the last value here? What is the X here? The value of X in this corner. X, X. Zero. X is zero. That's X. What's Y? y? What's the value of Y? 0 0.1. 0 0.1, yes, 0 0.1. So you go back to my uh, hair and I, I make a new point and this is my point. I change these values. So X is what? We said X is zero. Am I right? And Y is what? 0 0.1. So here you see where C went, here you see, it's just above A. Always go back to this one, move. Because if I click right now here, it start creating points. So here is A, B, C, according to my scale. What is next step? Next step is right click on this one, right click on this figure and go to setting. And once you are in the setting, this is what you see. There is an option saying position. So I have first corner, which is this one. Second corner, this one. Third corner, here. Fourth corner is here. What's supposed to be here? What, what point is supposed to be here? What point I need to bring here? Point C. So where is it? Because this is scale is different, but my nine is there. See, it's small. 
that's fine because we need to change it. We go here, back to always click here. This is one to one scale. One to one scale. No, uh, right click here. Setting. Uh, right click here, right click. Again, graphic. You need to find this thing. Why it didn't appear? Because I was clicking something, something else. Just make sure that you are clicking nothing. Go graphic. In the basic scale, make each 1,000 x-axis equal to 1. And x-axis becomes uh, smaller. Let's do it. That's perfect. That's what I want. That's what I want. So this is perfect because this from here to here, I'm having uh, 97 total distance. From here to here, that's exactly what I was seeing in my shot getter. Scale is perfect. Next step is to draw some lines. So first line is direct direct energy direct energy it goes through where it goes through what point direct energy is supposed to pass through a point which is this is the direct supposed to pass through zero zero yeah supposed to pass along the coordinate zero zero so what is zero, zero, zero? A is at zero, zero. So I click this one, I create a line, I click on A and start drawing a line. So you see, I'm trying to pass it through those first energy. Perfect. This is my first line. The second line is this line. So it's almost passing through those, the second energy. This is E. That's, the last line is this line. So how many layers are there? Three, three. So let me move, do something. This is the first F line. This is the F line. Let's click on it and change is to go to setting. Let me first click this one. Always go back, click this one because you can right now move it without any problem. So you go here, uh, setting and color change, make this one red. Line G, which is EF, that's EF. Make this one right click here, setting, color, make this one probably blue. Okay, and the last one, line H, which is G and H, go to setting, right click on these patterns, setting, color, red, let's make this one yellow. Yellow is good color. How we can know if it is three line or two line? Because the first breaks. And yeah, I'm seeing those breaks are the first few breaks up, up until like Jufun almost four, up to Jufun four, the energy, the first energy arrived is direct. You see these are all passing through these points. Whereas those almost passing through this line. You see the last line, they are, They are passing through these, except this one, because there is a polarity reverse, reversal for this and this one. There is a polarity reversal. And if they're supposed to be peak, it went and became tough because they swapped the connection to the cable. Jufun connection to the cable were swapped. And how I get the velocity? And we know the equation of line is simply y equal what a x plus b am i right 
That's the equation of a line. I think you have studied that in back in school. In here, what is the slope? What value is the slope? Okay. What is B? What is B? Uh, intercept. Intercept, yes. Intersection with the y-axis. Intercept or intersection with the y, which is T end. T end. So if you go back to this, that's the reason I haven't told you this thing before. So this is the equation. 1 over V2 is slope x this is t is y y x plus all of this the intercept which is b this is your equation what is the slope is 1 over v2 x is there t is y plus b b is all of this value which is the intercept so this is an equation of a line that's exactly what you see here. So how I get it? I get this value. Let's uh, let me open an X and something here. So equation that equation equals minus uh, 0.2 time X plus and y equals zero. So this is how much? N y equal x. Am I right? So y equal what? 0 0.02 divided by n times x plus zero. What is the intercept for the red line? What is the intercept for the red line? What is the intercept zero? Yeah. Based on this, I'm getting the equation from here. That's the equation of the red line. I'm just re rearranging it to make it simple. So what is the slope? The slope is simply this value. Where did it go? The slope is this value. So this is the slope. What is velocity? Velocity is reciprocal of slope. One over slope gives you velocity. Yani, for example, zero point zero two over. 10 is what is the slope. Velocity is simply what V equal 1 over slope. Let's say slope. We saw we 1 divided by, which is what? Divided by 0 0.02 over 10. So 1 time Velocity equal what? It's simply 10 over 0 0.02. Isn't it clear? So this is the velocity of the first layer. That's the velocity of the first layer. You get it from where? From simply here, from, from this line. What's the velocity of the second layer? Go to line, what is the line, the other line? Uh, I made it G, line G, that's the line. Do the same thing. Bring it here. Line G is equal to minus 0 0.002 X plus 26.9 Y equal 0 0.16 it's fine if you get sometime different numbers if i find anybody having exactly the same numbers probably there is a, some cheating 
and everyone's supposed to have some slightly different line because it's not very accurate. I sent you through uh, here, you find it. It's here, geometry tool. Geometry tool. Here is it in week five in the lab, geometry tool. So, usually, what they do. I mean, they go pick them manually, pick, 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 and get two points, get the change in X, change in Y, get the slope. Draw them, print it, draw the lines, get two points. What is this point? What is this point? So I made it simple by using this um, online tool. And try to work out this. Huh? إذا طبعا الأوراق وين نشتغل خارج نقدر نطلع المعادلات. No, you don't need then. You just you already got the velocity because you get the time change in time change in in at x x is lower one, which is what you see here. And you get two points. Let's say مثلا two points and this one. What is the value of value of x in here? It's four probably. What's the value of y time in here? Point, point zero one probably. Yeah, and a change in x over change in y for this red line is the velocity of uh, first layer. It's direct. This is first refraction. The yellow is the second refraction. It's the third layer. Velocity of third layer, velocity of second layer, velocity of first layer. Doctor, we slide that. What did we do? We did three. Did we do three? No, no, no. No, because this is not the same shot. The shot is different. It's not the same shot. It's not necessary to be the same shot. Any. So, maybe this can be like this. Any. More than line. So this is a different shot totally. This is a different shot. Is that clear why we made three lines? No. I want the way. Huh? I want the way how we know. If yeah, you, you or, if you or, go or, yes, based on your picking, if you pick them, pick the first breaks, and try to fit lines along these points, you will find there are three lines, and the number of those lines will give you the number of layers. That clear? So uh, I did it for this. I did it for second layer, and you do it for third layer, basically following these equations. If you are not happy using this technique, you can do it, then print it and take two points. Draw your lines yourself. This is the intercept then. That's the intercept for this line. That's the intercept for this line, the blue line having the intercept here. But this helps me because I can easily Easily get the intercept. That's the intercept. 0 0.16. 1.01. 1 .01, that's the intercept of all the lines. So it's not point because you need to divide by number. It's not exactly. Uh, it's how much I tell you. So this is gonna be 26 9 equal y. Sorry. Y equal zero point zero two x plus zero point one six. Divide all sides by this value. So it becomes y y equal zero point zero two x divided by twenty six point nine plus two point one six divided by two six point nine. So this is the this is the intercept for second one. First refraction. 
This is the intercept and this is the slope. Times X. This is time, this is distance. This is the slope. Slope is the opposite, yani. This, uh, sorry, the velocity is the opposite of slope, the reciprocal of slope. So 29.9 .9 divided by this value gives the velocity of the second layer. And this is the intercept time. Why I need the intercept time? Why I need the intercept time? To calculate what? Thickness. To calculate to thickness, yes. To get the thickness, calculate the thicknesses of first and second layer. You cannot calculate the thickness of third layer. But first layer, second layer. Third layer, you need then another la another line. So first of all, you calculate the velocity. That's the um, velocities. Then calculate the thicknesses. Calculate the critical angles or critical angles for refraction. You have two critical refractions. And for this case, uh, for this simple case, I'm having what exactly? Let me make it a drawing here. I have such case. So what, this is what I have. One layer, two layer, three layers. The direct is that. This is the first one, which is, I think, a red color there. Yeah, red color. And then you have this refraction. This is the critical angle. Then you have This is this one. The energy from here is that, the one you saw like that. The last one, this is another critical. I see. I see two, this is critical I, angle critical one. And the critical energy goes up like that. And they come back to the geophones. Go ahead here and come back to the G. Go ahead, come back. So this one is this one. I have one line, two line, three lines, three velocities. But I can get this thickness H1 and this thickness H2. I cannot get H3 because I need another line. I know that there are three layers, but thickness of third layers cannot be determined. But back in the questions, that what you see, it's saying, calculate the critical angles. There are two critical angles. And the critical angle is simply, you know how it's calculated. It's a critical angle. For example, this one is sine I angle uh, in critical angle. One equals V1, top layer V1 over V2. You already obtained Vs from here. That's the equation of critical angle, which is where, which is, I think you have seen it somewhere probably. That's the angle of critical angle. And you do the same, but for sine, this one, this critical angle is sine I critical two, which is then V two over V what? V three, yes. Yeah, that's it. Then let's take a look at the key. There are some questions. What is the first arrival energy at Jufun for 20 and 60? And choose one of them. Is it direct? Is it refraction? Is it first refraction, second refraction, and so on?
what is the energy? What energy is never the first to arrive? One of them is the right answer. Direct refraction or reflection. Right. Usually for reflections, reflection energy, you find them like that. This is ground rule. What you see here is ground rule. So let me draw it in here. All this area, these things, they are ground rules. Um, where I see the where I see the reflections, these are the reflection. This is a reflection. It's not very clear, but this is a reflection. This is also a reflection from some other layers. So this one is probably, mm, I made a mistake. Let me draw it again. But don't care about reflection. That's not for the time being. And that's not our subject for today. So these are reflections. You see this one? It's going parallel to it, parallel to this line. There is another one which is going parallel to parallel to other one. So that's all. that's how you draw the reflection. The reflections are hyperbolas. They go like that. Uh, this is how our reflections show up. They are not the first arrivals. Reflections, not refractions. We need to come differentiate between them. I think I need to stop here because uh, still have some time, but uh, I it cannot be done right away. Yani, you need to open, get the get the file, and uh, work with the with the lab. I don't want to waste your time because you can do it very quickly if you understood what I did can solve the answers, give me the answers right away, even though you have a week. Even though I start getting, receiving in emails from many of you, can you delay it? Can you postpone the submission? Why? You can do it very quickly. So I think it's easy right now. Do you have any questions? Make sure that you are always clicking. If you are not doing anything, click on the move. So you don't make arbitrary points by mistake. Uh, let's say if I'm here, I'm clicking, they're all, I'm trying to move it, I'm clicking more, but creating no more uh, points. So you go back here, move it, then select those three and delete them. Delete this one, delete this one. So I think we stop here unless if you have a question. Do you have any question? Is it clear to you all? So I by mistake I moved it. So you see to bring it back to its point. Do you have any questions, guys? No questions at all. You don't have questions. Uh, I will close. Stop recording.